Alright, so then we got two compactors, two almond. They're both around a thousand and twelve hundred pound machines. These are all hydraulic versus the Wacker being belt driven. So we're just going to go through them and bring them back if we can. All right. We're going to start with the AVH 6030. We're going to restore it and uh, bring it back. So we've got to make a puller to get the centrifugal clutch off. We're going to change it from the centrifugal to the newer style uh, where it's all controlled with a solenoid. So there's a bypass. And uh, So here's what we're thinking for mock-up. A little GX390 to replace the missing little Hatz diesel, single cylinder. So depending on the exhaust and everything, I'm gonna think about moving that hydraulic pump over to this side so I've got more room. Also got access to the air box. Still got access to the starter. Uh, there's a loop that goes up and over right there. I'm going to have to modify that to fit, but other than that, I think I can snake a lot of the hoses over to this other side down below and uh, come up with a configuration for the, the adapter from the engine over to that hydraulic pump, which is going to be mounted right, right here. Yeah, that's kind of what we think anyway. I just got to drain the oil and take the pump off just so I can do a mock-up with the cover. Okay. Also, if you want to drain the oil out of these machines, this is an Almond 6030 AVH. You can actually just go down here and take that plug out. It's a need a six mil allen where did i put that oh i put it here so just a six mil allen a really long one and then you can get that on and then i just ran a piece of tape from the bottom to a drain bucket so it doesn't go everywhere yeah and it looks like it holds quite a bit of oil maybe maybe 15 liters just cut it off with the hacksaw Oop. This little thing is amazing. This is the corded Milwaukee. Just awesome cutting everything. So we got some seized bushings on the almond compactor. It was a 6030. So couldn't actually move the handle up and down. These bushings are supposed to slide on the pin in the middle, but it seized up. So I gotta press them apart and fix it. I've already done this one. I had to press it apart. I thought I could hammer it, but it didn't work out. And then I just put it in the mill or in the lathe, sorry, and uh, cleaned it up a little bit. A little bit of rust had gotten in there, and there was no grease, so now it's smooth, spins nice and freely, just like it should. This is uh, an AVH 
6030 Almond Compactor. This is what it looks like with the cover off. So it's the triple exciter. And it's activated from either side. And if you need to get to drain the oil, it's a, I believe it's a 10 mil Allen that's stripped on this one. Uh, you gotta pull the side skirting off. There are 30 mil head bolts and they're on there really good with red lock tight. Yeah, I pulled the cover off to see what was going on inside and uh, I wanna check the plungers on either side of this. And it looks like they had the uh, black RTV on it and then we're gonna use the anaerobic sealer on it. So it'll be easy to get off next time and it'll seal really well. Okay. So if you wanna check your uh, the piston or the cup seals on your almond compactor, there's one on either side. And it's nice the way they have this design is an o-ring seal and there is an o-ring and a cut seal and these ones are in good shape and this one's an 05 and I think it's got a lot of hours so another good thing to check is to make sure that the small bearings inside move freely and you can take a look in there These ones are probably like the Wacker compactors where they are oiled by the rotating oil in the sump. And then we just clean up the o-ring groove, put some new grease in it, and then some blue Loctite on bolts. That's it. Undersize the bushing for this so we can press it onto the shaft and repair it. We're about two tons. This unit came with a centrifugal clutch and we're transferring it over to electrical uh, solenoid operated. And so we're just relieving some of the ports. I had it on the lathe. I'm trying to make it look like the newer style manifold there. That was off the newer machine. And uh, I was able to do it with some parts from Princess Auto and keeping the relief valve and everything standard. And uh, we just got to test her out, see if it works. So we just got this thing tested out, did a little trial run. The throttle is not hooked up. We put some new fluid in and clean the filter for the hydraulic tank. And then this is the way we decided to end up routing it. The engine and everything seemed to be the best way with the most clearance and trying to make everything accessible. I was thinking of not doing the electric start before. There's a little sight glass for the oil. But really, when it's direct drive like this, it's got to be hooked up to that battery to get it started. It seemed to be a little troublesome to start, but maybe it's just because I haven't run for a while. Pretty tight clearance over in the corner here. I had to notch that so that the air filter can come out. We're going to have to raise it off the base a little bit more, maybe an inch, so we can get that air box off and it's actually accessible. Yeah. And then it closes. So it's a pretty tight squeeze. But it works. And it's got enough power to drive it.
pretty close to that. And the torque is very similar to Got your forward and reverse. Yeah, that's it. So I think we're going to tear it all down, clean it up, paint it.